All right, so in this video, I wanted to go over some tips for if you're starting your Amazon business or how I would do how I would do some some stuff differently if I were to restart my Amazon business today. So uh, I've been fortunate to grow my Amazon business to over a million dollars in sales last year and uh, mostly through reselling items, uh, doing some online arbitrage. I've tried retail arbitrage in the past. Uh, I do use items. So this is more geared towards those people who want to uh, resell on Amazon. Some things I would change, some things I would do differently if I was starting over on there. So these are just some tips if I were to start out again on, on Amazon. So one of the things I wish I'd done sooner is uh, start off with a listing software. So when I first started on Amazon, I was just going on Amazon's website, creating a listing uh, through Amazon's uh, listing process, and then uh, just uh, sending in, in, in inventory through their own uh, system. Unfortunately, Amazon system isn't that great uh, for that. Also, their accounting is very, uh, really isn't much there for that. So there's a lot better software you can use for listing, first of all. So I want to go over that first. So if you start with some of these tools uh, like Inventory Lab or Accelerlist, they'll have some they'll have accounting built into it so if you start from the if you begin if you start right away with it you'll have accounting in these systems i didn't switch over to inventory lab uh, in my amazon business until a couple years into it and it was really helpful when i was able to do it and much easier to do my taxes uh, when i was using inventory lab for my accounting because i had all the cost of goods in there also these tools are just way way better than using Amazon's website. So I strongly recommend that uh, if you're going to start on Amazon, you also pick up one of these listing tools. Now it is a little bit difficult to learn uh, these tools. Uh, you, you probably will have to watch some tutorial videos. I know Inventory Lab has a lot of tutorials on their website, some videos you can watch with it. And it might be a little intimidating at first. Uh, so maybe do a couple of your first listings while you're uh, kind of learning how to create a shipment on Amazon's website. Uh, to kind of get started, but eventually, I, once you think you're serious enough to uh, start doing Amazon a little bit more, I would definitely pick one of these tools. So these tools are Accelerlist. Uh, I don't use that personally, but there's a lot of media sellers like myself who do use Accelerlist. I don't personally use it in my uh, media business, use media business, but a lot of people do like that if they're into, uh, if they're doing any kind of like media it seems, it seems to be specifically built for like books, CD, uh, video game, DVD sellers. So a lot of people like a seller list for that. Inventory Lab is basically the standard. Uh, if you're doing any kind of retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, you definitely should use Inventory Lab. As a media seller myself, mostly used media, I do use Inventory Lab. However, I'm probably uh, one of the few media sellers who, who, uh, who do use it. Uh, but I really like Inventory Lab. The accounting in Inventory Lab is super, super good. And if you're just getting started on it, Inventory Lab is kind of a no-brainer. Uh, the third, uh, there are some other listers out there, listing software you can use, but the third option I'd recommend is Turbo Lister, just because it's super cheap. Uh, you can get it for like 10 bucks a month if you subscribe to uh, the Scoutly scanning app is included with it. So it's a good place to start as well, especially if you're doing like used books, used media. But Inventory Lab, Inventory Lab is my choice. This is uh, what I use. It's the accounting is super good in that. Um, if you're doing any kind of like new items, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, I would definitely use Inventory Lab. The accounting is super good. Also, Inventory Lab does include the uh, Scoutify scanning app if you subscribe to it, which is a very good scanning app to use. It's free, and if you use uh, for Turbo Lister. It is included free with the Scoutly scanning app uh, starting at $10 per month. So inventory allows my choice on that. And for listing, I would just try to, as soon as you realize you want to you get serious about Amazon, maybe do your first couple of shipments through Amazon's website, but definitely start using some of this listing software. That's one of the uh, mistakes I made is taking a while to switch to inventory lab and integrating inventory lab into my business. All right. So next thing, uh, sourcing. Uh, these are just some tips that I would have liked to know uh, when I started sourcing. When I first started sourcing years ago, I would just take out my camera, use the Amazon seller app, uh, look up the barcode, 
and look up the prices there. So that's fine at first. It's fine to get started that way. It's probably a good way to get started. You don't have to pay any money. The Amazon seller app is free, but you can massively scale up your business and do a lot better if you uh, do a few tricks here with uh, the sourcing and install some apps and use some tools here. So when you're first starting, books are the easiest place to start in if you are uh, starting on Amazon, especially if you have a new account and you're not in, you're mostly gated in uh, most categories because uh, on Amazon, over time, the more stuff you sell, the more categories you'll become auto ungated in. You can submit an invoice to get ungated, but if you have sales, if you have a sales history of good metrics, you will get auto ungated in certain brands. So I always like books to start with. I started books very early uh, on Amazon uh, I wish I'd even started it even earlier. Like at first I was doing some toys and other stuff, but uh, books are a very easy thing to, to start with and just get started with. And they're super plentiful. They're at basically every thrift store at many garage sales. You can pull up to a garage sale at the end of the garage sale and most of the books will still be there. So if you do want to start with retail arbitrage, you may run into some gated items. A lot of people like retail arbitrage. They like the idea of it getting started. Uh, to be honest with you, I started my Amazon business in 2014, uh, 2013, 2014, and I failed at it. I was mostly doing retail arbitrage. It wasn't until 2016 that I came back to it, learned you could go to thrift stores, garage sales, pick up items and flip used items. And it was a lot easier for me to do, to do used items to get started, to get the snowball rolling of cash flow. Uh, it's very easy if you pick up an item for $5 at a thrift store and flip it for 50 uh, you're going to make some money pretty quickly with that. With retail arbitrage, there's more cash cash uh, that you have to put out for the items. There's more gates you have to deal with with it. So if you do want to get started with retail arbitrage, it is possible to do that. But just be aware that uh, it's a little bit harder than uh, doing stuff like books getting started with it. And if you have more cash, retail arbitrage can be good getting started. But many people kind of are doing this as a side hustle and might not have stuff available to them. I basically got started in uh, 2016, getting serious, flipping used items, and started from almost no money, um, just getting started with it, and used the used items. I picked up the garage sales and thrift stores to uh, build up the snowball, and then switch to some online arbitrage and other ways to get items as well to me. So definitely one tip, start with the thrift stores and garage sales, sell used items if it's uh, something that's appealing to you for a reselling business on Amazon. And then scanning apps. So I wish I'd started, I switched to a scanning app uh, earlier. I did switch to one fairly early, but if I wish I pretty much switched, like switched to it immediately, they basically will pay for themselves pretty much on your first trip to a thrift store in most cases. So the scanning apps are apps that tell you the price of everything. You can look up, scan a barcode of a book or a video game or a CD or DVD, and it'll tell you the price of what it sells for on Amazon super quick. So the scanning apps I recommend, Scout IQ, Scoutify, and Scoutly. Uh, Scoutly is the one I've used the most. Uh, Scout IQ is uh, pretty good as well. And Scoutify, I haven't used myself, but many uh, retail arbitrage sellers use it. It's included free with Inventory Lab. Scout IQ and Scoutly are more geared towards uh, booksellers, media sellers, where Scoutify is more geared towards retail arbitrage people. So if you're going with Inventory Lab, you probably should check out Scoutify, especially if you want to do retail arbitrage. It uh, works pretty well for that. So if you're going to get Inventory Lab anyway, you might as well get Scoutify. But if you get Scoutly, you get access to TurboLister for listing if you want to go that route. And Scout IQ is another option as well. So if you want to do books, use books in media. I'd recommend Scout IQ or Scoutly. If you want to do arbitrage or want inventory lab, check out Scoutify for that since it's included free. And then also, uh, I recommend picking up a, a uh, handheld Bluetooth scanner that it connects to your phone. It's something you can just uh, you can hold in your hand. You scan a barcode with it. You quickly. Uh, get the information with it on uh, these apps here. And it'll just quickly pull up all the all the information about it. It's way faster than using your camera. If you are doing book sales or anything competitive, you absolutely have to have one of these. There's basically no way you can do a book sale without it unless you want to spend hours there uh, and be get beaten by all of your competition. So if you do want to do uh, 
any kind of books or media or anything like that, absolutely get this Bluetooth scanner here. Uh, the one I linked here is one you can find on Amazon. I'll try to link this uh, in the video description, but uh, if you just search for a Bluetooth uh, scanner or Bluetooth handheld scanner on Amazon, you'll probably find uh, some listings for it as well. The one I have on here is, uh, I believe the brand is eYoYo, uh, which is just a random uh, brand. The scanner is a little bit bigger than the ones I've used. There's some, there some ones you can pick up on eBay if you want to go that route as well. But uh, this uh, scanner here probably costs about 50 bucks or so. And I, I'm super glad I switched to both a handheld scanner, uh, Bluetooth scanner, which I just attached to the back of my phone, and then use a scanning app because it made me so much more efficient, made me so much faster. When I was going around to thrift stores and garage sales, I could just fly through the media. I was smoking anyone who didn't have access to this kind of stuff, just be able to go super fast through this. And I wish I even started earlier getting uh, these apps and getting the scanner set up, with, set up with me. It was one of my competitive advantages was uh, having access to all the data and being able to quickly look up prices. And then here's some just final tips uh, that I have as well. If I were to restart my Amazon business, if I were starting over, definitely learn to uh, use and read Keepa charts. Keepa is a super useful tool on Amazon. I probably will make some videos on this channel in the future about uh, how to read Keepa charts and how best to um, how best to interpret the data on it. It takes a while to to figure it out, but and there's a lot of data on there. But Keepa is basically the standard for uh, data on Amazon. Uh, just to quickly show you this chart here, this is a video game, and the way that sales rank works on Amazon is it spikes up over time it goes up over time and then it spikes down once there's a sale so as you can see on this graph here you'll see spiking it'll go up and it'll spike down and it'll go up and it'll spike down and each time it spikes down that's one sale basically so what you can do by looking at this data on these charts is see how often uh, a game is selling or anything is selling on the website and Having access to that data helps you figure out whether you should be buying something or whether you should be passing on it, how often it sells, and just being able to learn uh, that stuff is super helpful. I'll try to make a video on this in the future. Keepa is probably one of the basically required services to buy uh, to, for Amazon if you want to get serious about it, and learning to read and interpret the data on that is super important as well. Also, if you're getting started, you want to be turning your inventory quickly. So you want to price competitively, you want a high sell-through rate for your inventory, you want to move it quickly and then reinvest that inventory. So price based on the buy box, this is uh, just a, an example of what you might see on Amazon. You'll see the buy box here. There's a new buy box and a used buy box. Uh, if there is used inventory, as well, if, there, if there is used inventory, there'll be a used buy box, but almost all of them have a new buy box. So you want to be in the buy box most of the time Everything sells for the buy box price. Uh, sometimes people will go into the list of all offers, but most of the time stuff is selling for the buy box price. So you want to price your item to be competitive with the buy box. Uh, as a new seller, you may not be eligible for the buy box, but you want to be moving inventory uh, to eventually get uh, eligible for it. Basically, you'll need to have a good number of sales in that category to get eligible for it. Uh, over time, you should get uh, eligible for it. Uh, you may have to price a little bit under the buy box price if you are a new seller to actually show up. Uh, people will have to go into the full list of offers to find you. But basically, you want to be pricing uh, at the buy box if you are um, if you are selling there. And you want to be competitive. You want to move inventory. So you definitely want to. This is what you should target. Many times I wasn't getting started. I actually didn't really understand the concept of the buy box. I thought if I just put a price up uh, and just put an offer, then eventually someone would buy it. But you want to target the buy box price on Amazon and always be competitive with that when you're pricing it. You always want to look at what the buy box is at. And uh, that's what you want to target when you're pricing. And eventually, final tip here, eventually you want to get a repricer. You don't need this right away. Uh, I think some people do this too early, uh, so that's another tip, don't do this too early. Um, 
the about the time I felt I needed it was somewhere around about 500 items in my inventory. It became difficult to reprice the inventory manually when you start to get that high with stuff in, in your inventory. Also, if you're in a competitive niche, you might uh, require it as well just to keep up with everyone else because people might constantly be updating their prices and you can't you can't you can't uh, keep up with them because all of them are using repricers as well so the two repricers i recommend there are many repricers out there but two i have used and recommend one is bql which uh it's a little bit difficult to figure out what the how to spell that but it's b q o o l if you google that it should come up uh, but it's b q -L, and that's a pretty good repricer i use it mostly for my uh, new inventory my online arbitrage or some retail arbitrage items um, it works pretty well for your new inventory if you're doing mostly retail or online arbitrage i would use bql as a repricer uh, and the other option, which I also use, is Reprice It, which is good for used inventory. Um, BQL, I don't feel is as good for used inventory. It seems to have some issues seeing the Use Buy box over here. Uh, it doesn't. It seems to be having some issues like pulling that from the API, where Reprice It is uh, just a little bit better as, for that for used items. Um, so, well, I, I actually use both of these repricers, but. If you're mostly focused on media, you should probably use Reprice It. And if you're mo mostly focused on new online arbitrage, you probably should use BQL. But you probably don't need these right away as a reseller. So you can probably wait a little bit of time until you have at least 500 units in your inventory where it's becoming difficult for you to manage the pricing of it manually. But at some point, it's going to just save you time to automatically use these. And also, one final tip, if you use a repricer, I can't tell you how to price your items, but my recommendation is match this buy box price here with the uh, repricers. Just just match the buy box price. You don't have to undercut it. You can just match that price there. And that's always worked best for me is just matching the price and adjusting it and also making sure you're not dropping it too quickly. There are settings you can set up in the repricers. Maybe I'll make a video in the future kind of going over my setup for these repricers as well. Uh, but these are my tips. If I were to restart on Amazon, I know many people want to get started on Amazon. It's a super confusing platform. It's super valuable if you put the time into it and learn it though. So these are some of my tips. If I were to restart, I hope you'll uh, check out future videos on this channel. I'll try to make some more videos about Amazon, just reselling in general. And I'll see you guys in a future video. Thanks for watching this one.